Obesity hypoventilation syndrome is a clinical syndrome characterized by the presence of obesity as defined by a body mass index greater than or equal to 30 kg per meter square and the presence of awake alveolar hypoventilation as defined by an arterial carbon dioxide level greater than or equal to 45 millimeters mercury. Uh, this is a diagnosis of exclusion. Uh, we have to exclude alternative causes of the hypoventilation before we make this diagnosis. Uh, sleep disordered breathing is universally present in these individuals. 90% of these individuals have obstructive sleep apnea and 10% of these individuals have sleep related hypoventilation. Patients with obesity hypoventilation syndrome present with snoring, witness apneas, daytime hypersomnia and morning headaches. The symptoms are very similar to those patients who have obstructive sleep apnea. We cannot distinguish just based on symptoms those who have obesity hypoventilation syndrome and those who have obstructive sleep apnea. Some of the clues on physical exam towards the presence of obesity hypoventilation syndrome would be the presence of uh, lower extremity edema and also a documentation of a lower oxygen saturation as measured by pulse oximetry. Obesity hypoventilation syndrome is diagnosed by performing an arterial blood gas measurement and demonstrating that the arterial carbon dioxide level is greater than or equal to 45 millimeters mercury in an awake state. Typically, uh, we also do a sleep studies in these individuals, mainly to demonstrate the presence of sleep disordered breathing. And during the sleep study, we can also measure the carbon dioxide levels by performing an entitled CO2 monitoring or a transcutaneous CO2 monitoring uh, to document nocturnal hypoventilation. Patients with obesity hypoventilation syndrome have more systemic inflammation, they have more endothelial dysfunction and more insulin resistance compared to obese subjects. Therefore, they manifest with more cardiovascular morbidities such as hypertension, congestive heart failure and corpulmonale. Studies have also shown that pulmonary hypertension is much more prevalent and much more severe in patients with obesity hypoventilation syndrome. And uh, studies have also shown that uh, patients with obesity hypoventilation syndrome have decreased uh, functional status and a worsened quality of life. Uh, there are also studies which have shown that patients with obesity hypoventilation syndrome may have more utilization of healthcare resources for up to five years before the diagnosis is made. Studies have also shown that there is an increased mortality in patients with obesity hypoventilation syndrome. The goals of treatment in obesity hypoventilation syndrome is to reverse the major physiologic abnormalities. Normalizing the nocturnal sleep and gas exchange is done by using positive airway pressure therapy. In patients with uh, obesity hypoventilation syndrome who also have obstructive sleep apnea, studies have used continuous positive airway pressure, bilevel positive airway pressure and bilevel positive airway pressure with average volume assured pressure support modes. Uh, all of these modalities of positive airway pressure therapy uh, have been shown to normalize the daytime hypercapnia and improve the symptoms equally well. In patients with obesity hypoventilation syndrome without obstructive sleep apnea, non-invasive ventilation has been used as treatment. Long-term studies of positive airway pressure therapy have shown an improved mortality in patients with obesity hypoventilation syndrome. The other uh, uh, major uh, strategy that we adapt is weight loss. Since obesity is the main driver of obesity hypoventilation syndrome, weight loss strategies are part of the long-term management of this disorder. So weight loss can be accomplished by dieting, exercise or surgical approaches. Studies have shown that surgical approaches are far more effective in accomplishing weight loss compared to lifestyle modification.